أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين قم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبي وحبيب إله العالمين طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها أبي القاسم المستفى محمد اللهم وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين الذين ذاب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راقعون صدق الله العلي العظيم My dear brothers and dear sisters سماحة حجة الإسلام والمسلمين السيد حفظه الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته In the beginning I would like to offer my well wishes and congratulations to the Imam of our time Al-Imam Sahib Al-Asri Wal-Zaman for the birth anniversary of his grandfather Al-Imam Amir Al-Mu'mineen Salamullahi Alayhi then also I offer my congratulations to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam especially to their mother Al-Zahra alayhim salam and also I offer my well wishes and congratulations to the entire Ummah at large and especially the Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and more importantly my congratulations goes to the community of Islamic Institute of America. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are all the true followers of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And may Allah grant all of us the tawfiq to earn the shafa'ah of Imam Ali yawm al-qiyamah. Insha'Allah. Tonight, as we are celebrating this great occasion, the birth of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, and more specific, the birth of Imam Ali alayhi salam, I would like to talk about the topic our brother just mentioned, meaning know your Imam. What does it mean when we say the word Al-Imam? What does it mean? Because I see that many of Muslims don't understand this word. When we say Imam Ali, Imam Al Hassan, Imam Al Hussein, we normally don't understand what this word means. Before we go to talk about this word, I want everybody to understand that nobody like me can speak enough about Imam Ali. That is impossible. And not just me, no person, ordinary person on the planet who can speak about Imam Ali as he deserves. And this is not my words. This is coming from Rasulullah. When Rasulullah looked at Imam Ali and he says, يا علي ما عرفك حق المعرفة إلا الله وعنه يا أمير المؤمنين no one is able to recognize you as you deserve to be recognized except Allah and Allah people lived with Imam Ali they saw him they mingled with him but they really didn't recognize him now let me show you one example. 
which proves that they didn't recognize who Imam Ali was. As Imam Ali stand on member and says, Saluni qabla an tafkuduni. And then a man stands, Kam sha'aratun fi ra'si wa lihiyati. Can you tell me how much, how much hair do I have in my hair and my beard? Do you think this person recognizes who is Imam Ali? Then Imam Ali looks at him in the face and he says, أَخْبَرَنِي حَبِيبِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أَنَّهُ تَعْتَ كُلُّ شَعْرَةٍ مِنْ رَأْسِكَ وَلَحْيَتِكَ شَيْطَانٌ يَلْعَنُكَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ The Prophet told me that there is a shaitan under each of your hair cursing you till the day of Qiyamah. These are the people Imam Ali dealt with. They didn't recognize who is Imam Ali. That is why it's very important for us to understand as we call ourselves Shia to Ali, it's very important to some extent to recognize this Imam. Because as you know, we all read in our dua. Most of the time after Salah, we read this dua. Allahumma arrifni نفسك فإنك إن لم تعرفني نفسك لم أعرف رسولك اللهم عرفني رسولك فإنك إن لم تعرفني رسولك لم أعرف إمامك إن سم دعاء حجتك then you say اللهم إن لم تعرفني حجتك أو إمامك ضللت عندي you are asking Allah to give you the recognition, the knowledge to know your imam. That tells you something, the importance of knowing your imam. Not only that, Ahlul Bayt tells us, when we go to ziyara, the ziyara is not what is required from you and I. Ziyara becomes important, but what is more important is ma'rifah of ziyara. Man zarana arifan bihaqqina. وجبت له الجنة. not من زارنا وجبت له الجنة. no عارفا. your زيارة come along with the معرفة. then that زيارة carries the weight. so when we talk about إمامة إمامة, we have to understand what is the إمامة that we're talking about. and not only is that important, in every stage of your life you need إمامة. every stage. Now, in this world, you need Imam. In Barzakh, you need Imam. Yawm al you need Imam. Allahu Akbar. In this world, you cannot live and survive and find the right path without Imam. And the reason is the dua we just read. If I don't recognize my Imam, dalal tu andini. In Alam al barzakh you need Imam. When we bury a person in the grave, one of the reminder, man imamuk. When the angels come and they ask you, إِذَا أَتَاكَ إِذَا أَتَاكَ الْمَلَكَانِ الْمُقَرَّبَانِ الرَّسُولَيْنِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى وَسَأَلَاكَ أَنْ رَبِّكْ وَأَنْ نَبِيِّكْ وَأَنْ دِينِكْ وَأَنْ كِتَاءْ وَأَنْ إِمَامِكْ In Barzakh, you have to be questioned about Imam. Not only that, يوم القيامة, Allah said, you're going to need the imam too. يوم ندعو كل أناس بإمامهم. Allah said, يوم القيامة, we're not going to just call you by name, Muhammad, Ali, Zahra, Fatima. No. We will call you by the imam you choose. That should tell you the importance of imam. So, when you see about this importance of wilada and shahada, we celebrate, we mourn. You have to understand where we come in about the importance of Imam. That is why tonight I choose to talk about know your Imam. And if you don't know your Imam as you're supposed to, trust me, you cannot claim to be their followers, Yom al Qiyamah. Trust me. You know, there's no many hadith that Imam Ali alayhi salam during his lifetime, people come and say, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, na'nu shi'atuk. And I said, no, 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 you're not. Nanu shi'atuk. I said, no, you're not. I said, laysa fikum sima u shi'atina. There is no features of the shi'a 
of our Shia in you. I don't see it. So it doesn't matter what you call yourself Shia, follower of Ahlul Bayt. If you don't meet the criteria, then you are not the Shia of Ahlul Bayt. For that matter, tonight we want to just take some lesson about how do I recognize my, who is Imam, as we call them Imam. Number one, the word Imam is an Arabic word. Kalimat Imam, Kalimatun Arabiya, from Arabic. And the word Imam has two meanings. One is called Al Kalim Al Imam Lugatan Wastilahan. Al Lugat in Arabic, when you say the word Imam, is somebody who's leading. Any leader is called Imam in Arabic. And from this, People who lead Salat, what do we call them? The imam. Because they lead. They stand, they stand in front of us to lead us a prayer. So we call them imam. And this word imam, many times people take imam as somebody holy, spiritual. No, no, no. Somebody can be non-holy and he's still imam too. And Quran used those two words, imam for good and imam for bad. The good Imam, Allah said, We made them Imams, they guide and our command. Another bad Imam, Allah called them Imam. He said, al Kufr in Surah Al Tawbah. Allah said, Fight the lead, the Imams of disbelief. But Quran called them Imam too. So, don't think that the word imam is holy thing. Everybody who is imam, leader, we call him. No, no, no. Imam can be given to somebody who is misguided too. And from that Quran says, Nadu kulla unasin bi imamikum. Aimat al kufr is included too. That is in literally in Arabic. Now, when you come in the fiqh al Ja'fari, aqid al Ja'fariya, when we say the word imam, what do we really mean? How do we define imam? Now listen to Ahl ulama al-halli wal-aqd. You call them ulama al-aqidah. How do they define imam? They said, al-imamatu ri'asatun am. And I really want us to listen to each word as they define the word imam. Because the more we understand the definition of imam in our aqidah, it helps us to understand how deep these people can be and how significant the imama is. They define imama, imama re'asatun ammatun. Which means, it's a leadership. Re'asa, leadership. Ammatun, general. I just want you to think, you brothers and sisters, imama is not a joke word. Sometimes some people cannot understand. They say, why do you say our prophet, uh, imams are better than the prophet? Some of us, we hear that. Say, no, how can the prophet be less than the imam? A prophet should be the higher position in Islam. But we say, no, no, our imams are better than the prophet, even ulul azm, except the holy prophet. How do we make that? How, what, how did we get that? Look at the definition. It's a general leadership. There are many prophets, Allah sent them, but they were not general leaders. They were leaders to a certain communities. Yunus is a prophet. Allah sent him. What did Allah say in the Quran? He said, Wa arsalnahu ila mi'ati alfin. Oh, yes, you do. He's a messenger, huh? But Allah says he's not a leader for everybody. He's a leader to whom? 200 people, me at 100,000 people, that's it. He's a prophet, he's a messenger, but his leadership doesn't include everybody. But our imams, re'asatun am. They're imams and their leadership is general. And not only that, it says ashamila, which includes al ummah includes ummah. What do we mean ummah? Ummah means human beings? No. Means jinn? No. Means animals? No. When the word ummah means every creation on the planet, imams are their leaders. 
our imams, they are leaders of all humanity. They are leaders of all jinn. They are leaders of all even animals. Because animals, they're part of ummah too. Listen to the Quran. وَلَا طَائِرٌ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاحَيْهِ إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ Allah said, the birds that flies, that you see them, they are also part of the ummah too. Our imams, they are leaders of even jinn too. That's why in ziyara, what do you say? As-salamu alayka ya imami wa imam al insi wal jan. And I mentioned this to understand. Sometimes when we hear the stories that imam spoke to a lion, or the lion couldn't hurt imam, how could that be possible? When you understand the definition of imama, then you understand the significance of what that imam is about. So the word al-imamatu ri'asatun shamilatun and then say fi ala al-umma al-islamiyya then he says fi jami'i al-majalat in all fields and that's one of the misconceptions we think we think our imams when they are the imams in terms of salat ahkam fajr salat zakat hajj but when imam comes in let's say for example in the field of IT's Imam doesn't know anything like you and I so okay I know about fiqh, ahkam, history, Islamic yes but if you ask me about IT I say I don't know anything about it our Imams they are not just equipped and knowledgeable in ahkam fi jami'il majalat I guarantee you if 12 Imam is to show up today he will be the leader in all the IT's if the imam is to show up today, the 12th imam, any games our youth are very familiar with, imam is their imam in that game too. If you ask imam in basketball, he is imam in your basketball too. Imam is not just a leader in shooting in every aspect that you can think of. He is the best. Fi jami'il majala. And I pray to Allah you get long life to see 12 Imam. If you get a chance, tell him, I want to play soccer with you and see how Imam can show you how good he's soccer player. Don't ever underestimate the power of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. Imam Ali, during his time, he was walking with his companions who didn't recognize him. He looked at the war and he said to them, Wallahi law shi'tu la sana'tu minhu nooran. If, if I want, I can make a light from this. But the people couldn't understand. Why? Water? How, do you, how can you make a light from this? Today, our electricity, where does it come from? But Imam Ali told them thousands of years ago, but they couldn't recognize. Because they think Imam is just about ahkam and fiqh. No, but he's beyond that. This great Imam was telling them back in those days, لَسَنَعْتُ مِنْ هُنُورًا That is the Imam. In every fault that you can think of, Imam is in that fault. This imam, as we define them, they have to come with three important qualities. Every imam that we call them imam, he must have these three things. Number one, every imam must be chosen by Allah. No imam ever been elected. Like Khula Khilafa, yes, there's a shura. People sat down and said, hey, we want you. That's, that's Khilafa. An imam cannot be chosen by any human being. An imam must be chosen by Allah. Because of the importance of this position, Allah didn't let people to choose. Now somebody can ask, why can't we choose imam? I say, you can. But the thing is, you might not choose the right imam for yourself. And a simple example, how many of us we chose president in this country? Huh? In the first year, you were so excited. MashaAllah, I got to go elect and stand in a line. So many hours, put your election. And the after you say, oh God. I wish I knew better. Can't wait four years to be over. Right? Counting day. This is the person you elect. Right? Now, you realize something you did not know. Now, if Allah is to let you and I to choose Imam, do you think what's going to happen? So Allah said, this imam is so holy 
that I should not put in your hand. It should be me. So the imam must be chosen by whom? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every imam is chosen by Allah. That's the first thing. Number two. Every imam also must have a knowledge that comes from Allah. Not my knowledge and your knowledge that I learned from somebody. Sometimes after years you realize, oh, that was wrong knowledge I got. No, no, no. The knowledge comes from Allah and is pure and clean and knows everything. That is why our imams, nobody ever asked them question. And they said, la adri. That word never came in the mouth of Ahlul Bayt. Why? That knowledge that they have comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can see that in Amirul Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi. Nobody ever asked him a question. And he said, no, I don't know. Actually, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he was the only person in the history ever went on the member and said, saluni qabla an tafqidu. Allah check in the history. No person ever stood on the member and made this, this statement. Except Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because their knowledge come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their knowledge never came from human being. That's why no teacher, nobody in the history of Ahlul Bayt ever said that I taught Imam al-Jawad. Or Imam al-Hadi was my student. Or Imam Jafar was. There was never this in history. As a matter of fact, everyone who is knowledgeable always said, my teacher is this imam. But was never imam saying, he is my teacher. Never. That is number two. Number three, every imam also, not only he has to have these two qualities, he must also be ma'asum. His actions must be pure too. What's the meaning of isma? No, but let me say this, brothers and sisters. You know, the word isma doesn't have a proper translation in English. Because when you look at the English, when we say infallibility, when you check in dictionary, infallibility means somebody who cannot commit sin. But that's not what isma is. Our imams, they can commit sin if they choose. But they choose not to. There's a difference between, no, I cannot, you put somebody in the prison and you lock them up. He said, no, I cannot steal because I'm a masoom. I haven't committed stealing for years. Yes, because you're locked up. Yes. If you are out, would you be the same thing? No, we don't know that, right? So the option is not there for you. That's why we have al-isma al-ikhtiyariya wa al-isma al-ijbariya. Our imams, they are masoom bil-isma al-kubra al ikhtiyariya they choose. If they want to sin, they can. But they choose not to sin. Every ma'asum must possess these three attributes. If this is clear, let's come to Imam Ali alayhi salam. Al-Imam Amir al-Mu'minin salam Allah alayhi. He is a man where no one is match other than Rasulullah. No one is match of Imam Ali except Rasulullah. And this is not just a claim. But why are you exaggerating? Why are you talking about Imam Ali? The Quran says that. I didn't say it. There was no human being Allah ever created which is equivalent to Imam Ali other than Rasulullah. There's nobody. And this is one of the reasons you have to understand. When we say our imams are better than the other prophet, this is the ayah from the Quran. When ayatul mubahala came, wa anfusana wa anfusakum, who was nafsun nabi in the Quran? Now Allah is telling you, not me. Allah is telling you. Ya Rasulullah, bring somebody who is your nafs, yourself. Now check all the tafsir. Who did they bring other than Imam Ali? Who is nafsun nabi. Now someone who is nafsun nabi, can he be matched with anybody? That is why when they ask Imam Hanbal, Imam Hanbal, one of the four school of thought of Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they ask him question about 
الصحابة. Listen, من هم الصحابة النبي? Who do you think they are the companions of the Prophet? He said, Abu Bakr. The first companion that I know. ثم من? Say, ثم عمر. ثم من? ثم عثمان. ثم من? He said, that's it. These are the great companions that I know of. Then the second question comes, وَأَيْنَ تَرَكْتَ عَلِيًا وَبَتِ مَامَ عَلِيًا Now listen to his answer. Beautiful. Coming from Alim, Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jamaah. He says, سَأَلْتُ مُونِي أَنِ الصَّحَابَ وَلَمْ تَسْأَلُونِي أَنْ نَفْسِ النَّبِي So you ask me about the companions, and I just told you, if you are to ask me who is equivalent to, Ima, to, to the Prophet, I would have told you that Ali ibn Amir al That is Imam Ali alayhi salam. In terms of quality, no match except Rasulullah. This Imam Ali alayhi salam is one of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. Tonight, our time is getting, getting closer. But I just want us to take something home as we learn from Imam Ali alayhi salam. My dear brothers and sisters, every year we think, we sit down, we celebrate. Imam Ali is not just on the mouth and tongues. It's more about actions. As we celebrate every year, every year as we learn from Imam Ali, it should change our akhlaq, our character, our attribute in lives. And tonight, I just want to share three things as a take-home message from Imam Ali alayhi salam. One thing that is known about Imam Ali alayhi salam is mutawadah. Very humble. Imam Ali was never mutakabir. Was never arrogant. In every aspect of his life, Imam Ali was very humble. Today, let me ask you and I, are we humble with our spouses? Hmm? I don't want you to answer me. It's a question. How do I treat my wife? Am I humble towards my wife or arrogant? Like a woman, how do I treat my wife? A husband, how do we treat one another? Am I humble towards my wife? No, brothers and sisters, Imam Ali is not just fada'il. Yes, yes, yes. Wa, 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 wa. No. It's more about akhlaq, amal. When you look in Hadith al-Kisa, the way Imam Ali talked to his wife and the way Zahra talks to him is a lesson to our life to change. Today, our marriage is having issues and problems. One of them is lack of respect. We need to change our lives at homes. I'm a husband. I have to have a respect for my wife. I'm a wife. I have to respect my husband. The way I talk, the way I speak. Let that be akhlaq we learn from Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salam. And one example, when you read Hadith al-Kisa, Imam Ali, as he walks home, he says, As-salamu alayki ya binta rasulid. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali with this caliber comes home, and he talks and addresses his wife with these beautiful words. His wife also, as she addresses him, she says, Wa alayka salam, ya amir al mu'mineen. Not ya Ali. Like some of us we call our husbands. Imam Ali and Zahra, they teaching us about social life in marriages. Imam Ali, his humbleness have reached to the point he walks in the court system where he is the Khalifa, he is the Imam. As he walks in the court, the judge looks at him, he calls the other person his name, and he calls Imam Ali Amir al Mu'mineen. Imam Ali said, No. Don't call me Amir al Mu'mineen and call him by name. As we walk in this court, we're all equal. Look at the humbleness. A man takes his sword. And the man who happened to, in this situation, he took Imam Ali's sword, huh? And Imam Ali wanted the sword back. He still was arguing with Imam Ali. No, I didn't have your sword. Let's go to the court. Now, I guarantee you, any, pound, any Muslim country, forget about non-Muslim, any Muslim country today, you take any president's shoe, right? The president walks in the center of place, 
Let me say, I grab his shoes. I'm going to see what he's going to do. I guarantee you, you're not going to see a son anymore. That's it. You're going to disappear for taking the present shoe. Allahu Akbar. Imam Ali alayhi salam, the man took his sword, but this is how humble Imam Ali was. That is lesson number one for tonight. Humbleness in our relationship. Children, we have to be humble towards our parents. Respect your parents. Be humble when it comes to your mother and your father. Don't be arrogant just because I have this degree, that degree. I am boss. I am. When you come to your father and mother, be humble. Never think you're going to be arrogant to your parents and expect your children to be humble. It doesn't work like that. You can never plant the seed of a corn and expect banana. You might expect that in the Lala land, but not on this land, huh? Whatever you plant is what you're going to sow. If you and I, as a children, we plant the, the seed of respect to our parents, trust me, your children will grow up respecting you. Be humble. Just because I have many people working under me, I come home, I disrespect my father, my mother, my elders. That's not the Shia of Imam Ali and Ali. That's the first message for tonight. The second message of tonight, brothers and sisters, from Imam Ali and Ali. Salam. Imam Ali and Ali salam lived a very, very simple life. Simple food. Simple clothes. Simple life. Even though he was the Khalifa, the money is there. He can play with it as he wish. But he never lived that luxury life. Today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. You have a lot. Imam Ali, look at him as your example. Live a simple life. Your food, your eat is simple. Your clothing should be simple. These are the true Shia of Imam Ali. Because remember, here's the thing, brother. Let, we shouldn't lie to ourselves. Okay, I'm a Shia. Because remember the word Shia. Bima'na, huh? Al-Mutaba. The follower. A Shia, meaning somebody who follows Ahl al Their example. Now, you cannot call yourself Shia when Imam Ali does something and you do something different. And say, how can you be Shia? You can be Shia by acting the way Ahl al acted. And they were very, very simple. We need to learn to be very simple. In every aspect of lives. Do not waste in every, any aspect of your life. And I'm talking waste in many things. Water, electricity in the house. MashaAllah, some of us who have a big houses, you see people are upset, but all the electricity downstairs is on. You know, I can't afford it, so what's the big deal? Yes, but it still is israf. The water, I'm, spend, I'm, spend, I'm using water for wudu, mashallah. Sometimes the water is running, I'm on the phone, right? 10, 15 minutes and the water running. And it's called yourself Shia? No, you can't be. The Shia must live simple life. That is lesson number two. Let's adopt simplicity in everything. Be simple when you deal with people. Don't be too tough. I will never forgive. I will, let, I will never let it go. No, be simple in every aspect of life. That is lesson number two. Lesson three. Let's all be the Shia of Imam Ali by learning to share with people who are less fortunate. And today, there are many of them. I cannot call myself Shia. -y. While I'm not taking care of people, Imam Ali taught me to. You know when Imam Ali was there, they used to call him Abu Al-Aramili wal Aitam, the father of the orphans and the widows. That's what Imam Ali was. Even narration says, when Imam Ali wakes up in the morning for Fajr, as he called the Adhan, the children in Kufa, they said, Hada sawtu abuna Ali. This is the voice of our father, they call him. 
and you know and I know historically how he cares for the people in Kufa. He used to carry food on his shoulder and give to those who are less fortunate in the society. Today we have so many of them in this country. So many of them in Iraq. So many of them in Yemen. So many of them in other part of the world, like Afghanistan. What are we doing as the followers of Imam Ali in that term? Let's be the Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam by action, not just by words. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these three actions, we can put it this year as the year of Imam Ali alayhi salam in action. So that next year, we learn something more to become better followers of Imam Ali alayhi salam. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this happy occasion of the birth of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. And may Allah grant all of you the tawfiq of being the true shi of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Bin Nabi wa Ali Muhammad. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Thank you, dear Sheikh. Can we give him another loud salawat? Uh, quick reminder, before we continue tonight's program, we'll have a gift raffle uh, at the end of the Arabic program, inshallah. Um, so please, if you don't mind, help me in welcoming our dear brother, Nuri Sardar, with a poetry performance uh, after three loud salawats, ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. صلى على محمد وآل محمد I'm no date seller but I aspire to be in the love of Ali I yearn to be Maytham Maytham at Tamar as we know was one of the greatest companions of Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam to the extent that there's a beautiful story where Maytham before he met Imam Ali was a slave in the markets and Imam Ali approached him and told him, Salaamu Alaikum, Maytham. At that time, Maytham said, no one knows my name, my real name, except my mother. So how do you know my name? He says, the Prophet used to tell me about all the adventures that me and you would go on. And how me and you would become great friends one day. And as we know, he was a tamar, a date seller. And in his honor, I say, I'm no date seller, but I aspire to be. In the love of Ali, I yearn to be Maytham. I'm tied not to a tree, but tied to its root. And the root of Islam is Abu Talib's son. Mountains may be moved, but my faith cannot be. When one falls for Ali, that choice is long gone. I hear them whisper that my love for him is too much. Don't they know that in his love I seek to drown? That I sip from the rivers of Walaya of Ali? Until the day that its blessings drown both my lungs. Maytham watered the tree upon which he would die. I carried the crucifix which I'll be pinned on. Maytham knew no words except praises of Ali. And if I am blessed, then Maytham I'll become. And I shall recite the virtues of Ali until the day that they cut out my tongue. And I shall recite the virtues of Ali until the day they cut out my tongue. Ifla Musalli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Let me get a second louder salawat, please. And a third with the loudest of your voices. For my first of Two poems, inshallah. Obviously, I'd like to congratulate you all on this auspicious occasion, the birth anniversary of our master, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Talib, alayhi salam, who has a place deep in the core of all our hearts as Shia. And one of the ways that we can get to know this great individual is through the battles that he fought. So, inshallah, my first poem will be about the battle of Khaybar. 
It's a story that where, when you hear it, no Shi'i cannot shake his head and smile. No pulpit cannot enjoy a lecturer hearing the story of the Battle of Khaybar without showering praise upon its conqueror. The great Jewish tribe of Bani Qaynaqa lived in Khaybar when all others were poorer. It was a land rich with dates, and all those there were rich. They'd sell better swords than any armorer. Their fortress of Khaybar was one to be envied. It was the best protector and the best shelterer. They envied Islam and they envied Muhammad, wanting to be of Islam the slaughterer. So they would approach Persia and they would approach Rome, saying, who wants to make Islam the sufferer? Why is it that Muhammad sits in Medina, leaving the Jew to be on the outskirts a lingerer? Which wasn't true, because the Jews lived in Medina in peace. To comfort, they could not be nearer. The Muslims would protect and would serve the Jews. No Jew in Medina would be a wanderer. But Bani Qaynaqat themselves, they sought murder and treason. Of peace itself, they were each a slanderer looking to topple the appointed leader towards shaitan's ear. It was a whisperer. So the Muslims departed with 16,000. An army that was of the defenseless Aspera, an army that met eight fortresses in Khaybar, and of seven of those eight, it was a scatterer, until left was the fortress of Khaybar itself. Until left was the fortress of Khaybar itself. And emerged from Khaybar a fearless warrior who cried, I'm Marhab, and Khaybar is aware. I am the fear of every murderer. Muhammad would give Abu Bakr the flag. But of Khaybar, he was not a recoverer. He gave it to Omar, but he returned too. Of victory, neither of them was a wearer, so the Muslims were sad. And they stood there for 25 days. Victory became unclearer and unclearer until Muhammad stood up and he announced to them all, Muhammad stood up and he announced to them all, tomorrow I will pick my own flag bearer. God and me love him and him and me love God. God and me love him and him and me love God. Of victory, this man will be an explorer. This man won't return empty-handed ever. In fact, on Allah's behalf, he will be a conqueror. He went to Ali, and Ali's eye was blind. How many pairs of eyes could see so much clearer? But Muhammad took his saliva, and he placed it in his eye, and he placed his flag in the hand of this admirer. So Ali rode out where he was met by Marhab. Ali rode out where he was met by Marhab, who cried of warriors, I am a torturer. My mother named me Marhab, and all of Khaybar knows that of the graves of warriors, Warriors, I am the preparer. Ali looked at him and his eyes glared into his. Two mountains stood off, which was wearier. Ali raised the cry that made Marhab's blood freeze when he said, I am the one whose mother named him Haidara. Marhab took steps back. Marhab took steps back because he knew of his fate. Marhab, he took steps back because he knew of his fate. That one named Haidar would be his soul's capturer. Ali struck his helmet and his sword reached his teeth. What happened next shook every swordsman and spearer. The gate of Khaybar, that 44 couldn't lift, he lifted it with one hand, with God as his inspirer. The Jews of Qaynaqa surrendered, seeing a miracle of Khaybar's victory. He was the declarer. It was after this day that Ali split mankind. It was after this day that Ali split mankind. Those that loved him, they became of him a ponderer, while others would open their envious eyes. Hatred of him itself would be a conferrer. To those that believed, Ali was faith embodied. To those that didn't, he was just a sorcerer. But when he held Khaybar's door over his head, he proved that into faith he was an adventurer. He proved that into faith he was an adventurer. Afalam salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Give me a second, louder salawat, please.
and a third will love to your voices. As you can see, the cold of Dearborn is really getting to me, mashallah. It's like minus 19 degrees Celsius, so kind of bearing it. But hopefully, inshallah, with time, we'll bear it more and more, inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Ending with some fada'al of Ali ibn Abi Talib, alayhi salam, and of him, they ask me about him. They ask me about him, the one who was born in the Kaaba, the one who was named Haydar, the first man to believe in Rasulullah, who slept in the bed of the messenger, the Harun to Ahmed's Musa, the wielder of Dhul Fiqar, the mountain of Uhud, and the conqueror of Badr, the conqueror of Khaybar, who made Fatima's heart flutter, who stood on Ahmed's shoulders to break the idols of idolaters, the Mola after the Mola, the one struck in his prayer, who'd offer his killer water, who declared he was successful and splits heaven in hellfire. I replied, is there anything left to ask? Is there anything left to ask about the one who with just one hand and not even with his tongue changed the very orbit of our ancient sun as if he could have destroyed it by covering it with his, with, with his thumb? The one who offered his life in the prophet's stead and did so by laying in Revelation's bed the bronze skin of his throat it's yearned to turn blood red, to sacrifice all that was Ali for the sake of Ahmed, the only one in history who deep within his prayer, heard both the Lord's words and the voice of the beggar in despair. His finger, in its own consciousness, extends and says, Here, the zakat was the ring, but the wealth was the gaze of Ahmed's heir. The one who would sleep restless, even though he led a whole kingdom, saying, how can I sleep comfortably when my lands have poor within them, whose heart was a firm mountain that melted for the orphan, whose five senses belonged to the oppressed, be it now or be it then. The one who with just one hand held the battlefield of Bedr against the thousands of Hanain, his skin would not dare shutter because there are thousands of warriors, but only one Haidar. And if you doubt this, ask the story told to Marhab by his mother. If you doubt this, ask the broken gate that once belonged to Khaybar. Ask the mystics, ask the beggars, ask his cradle that was the Kaaba. Ask the Sufis, ask the Sunnis, ask the Shia who clung to his Khalifa. Ask the walking scent of heaven, ask Fatima to Zahra. Ask the ones who call him one, ask the ones who call him four. Ask the souls that are long gone, who'd recite Dam Dam Ali Kur. Ask the saints who were humbled at the foot of Ali door. Ask the split of heaven and hell. Ask Adam what was before. Ask the split of heaven and hell. Ask Adam what was before. Ask the millions that yearn his dome of the secret of this warrior. Ask the battle within his heart. The nefs that was never superior. Ask the two prongs of Dhul Fiqar of the oneness of its master. Ask his lover of heaven because they know the sweetness of the hereafter. Ask with an open heart and let your heart be filled with him. Then you may ask your heart of this wealth of love deep within. Ask Ali of Ali because Ali is still living. Ask Muhammad of Ali and he'll tell you everything. Ask Muhammad of Ali and he'll tell you everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.